Hello, everyone, and welcome to Heads Up, the weekly podcast of the National Headache Foundation. I'm Dr. Lindsay Weitzel, migraine strategist, founder of the Facebook group Migraine Nation, and chronic daily migraine survivor. I am here with Dr. Vincent Martin. He is the director of the Headache and Facial Pain Center at the University of Cincinnati, and he is also the president of the National Headache Foundation. Hey, today we have an awesome topic. We uh, picked this topic to come right after our Ehlers Danlos episode. Uh, it is postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, otherwise known as POTS. It often occurs along with Ehlers Danlos syndrome, which is why we chose to sort of do them together. Um, so, without further ado, let's learn what we can about this disorder. Um, so, let's start talking about what are the signs and symptoms of POTS. Well, POTS has a number of different symptoms. I would say the biggest one would be dizziness when they stand up. So, they get the feeling like they're, they're lightheaded and so forth. And the other symptom that's overwhelming is a sense of fatigue. And the reason why these patients get fatigue is because their pulse races every time they stand up. So it's like they're running a race. So the fatigue is absolutely overwhelming. So um, what are the actual diagnostic criteria for, for POTS? Well, the, at, the, the diagnostic criteria include if you're lying down and then you stand up, within three to five minutes, your pulse will go up by 30, 30 beats compared to what it was when you were lying down. Um, and the blood pressure will, will not change, that will change less than, will not fall more than 20 beats, um, 20 millimeters of mercury. So, so the blood pressure doesn't change, the pulse by goes up by 30 beats per minute. There's another criteria where if you start out, say like a higher level, let's say you start out at 105 and the pulse goes up over 120, then that could be consistent with the diagnosis of POTS with no fall in blood pressure as, as well. So it's a, it's a rise in pulse with very little change in blood pressure. And this can be done in a doctor's office. You don't need to do something called a tilt table test, which is where you go to a cardiologist and they, put you on a t they strap you on a table and they check your blood pressure and pulse lying and they check your blood pressure and pulse um, when you're upright and uh, so forth. Um, you do not need to do that to make a diagnosis of POTS. Okay, um, so let's discuss uh, who is usually diagnosed with POTS and what age does it usually show up in a person? It usually shows up in younger um, individuals um, and there's a variety of different uh, situations in, in which it might occur. One would be in people that like are, have, had, have had surgery and are not very active and they've been laying in bed for uh, prolonged periods of time. POTS can also worsen with different um, hormonal events, particularly in women. So it, it can worsen around the menstrual period. It can also worsen with pregnancy in, in some uh, patients um, as well. And there could even be some medications that might, that might be associated with it, ones that kind of activate the, the fight or flight nervous system, which is important in POTS. Okay. So you've touched on my next question. I wanted to ask if we know what causes POTS. Well, it depends on which type of POTS that you have. Okay. So there's one, um, it's associated with, with Ehlers-Danlos syndrome or joint hypermobility syndrome. And that is thought to occur because the connective tissue of the veins is more elastic. So every time you stand up, you pull blood in your, in your legs and you don't get as much blood going back to the heart, and then that activates the fight or flight nervous system causing symptoms of POTS. But there also are other forms. There's another one called hyperadrenergic POTS. That's hyperadrenergic just refers to the fact that the sympathetic nervous system, which is your fight or flight nervous system is an overdrive. And uh, you can actually determine that by measuring hormone levels called norepinephrine when you stand up, and when you lie down, and if it's more than about 600 when you stand up, then that would be a consistent that would be consistent with the diagnosis of hyperadrenergic POTS. There's also POTS associated with other disorders like uh, diabetes. There's an autoimmune um, disorder where you can develop your body can attack itself. It attacks the autonomic nervous system, and that can cause POTS as well. So there's a variety of different uh, types of POTS. Okay. 
So there's more than one type. And then the next thing I was going to ask, you've already touched on a little bit too. I want to see if you want to add more. I wanted to ask uh, what makes it worse or exacerbates it. You already said hormones, probably menstruation in women. You said lying still, for example, after surgery. Was there anything else? Well, dehydration. So if you don't drink enough fluid, um, you can be dehydrated, and that can be a big exacerbation factor or it's you know in this whole in this world where we always kind of avoid salt there's some people that that actually would benefit from salt so if your blood pressure runs low for example and you get dizzy when you stand up actually salt may be a good thing for you so this whole thought that salt is bad for every person is not correct and and if you have pots you're not going to develop high generally you're not going to develop high blood pressure from pots um, with with salt so salt is really important as well okay so how long does POTS usually last? Is this something that people recover from or do they, once they have it, they always have it? What's the thought, thoughts on that? Um, it depends. I mean, if you, if you have a risk factor that's a persistent one, like Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome or diabetes, then they may, it may persist for long periods of time. It's not to say that you can't deal with it with, with very with various lifestyle changes and medications. But if you, if it's related to something that's somewhat transient, like a surgical procedure or something, then oftentimes people can improve. There's even some thought um, by, there's a researcher out at uh, Stanford University that believes that some people who have leaks of spinal fluid, which I think we talked about last week, uh, being associated with uh, Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, that if that occurs, that, some, that, that uh, this investigator believes that that POTS, POTS occurs in those people as a result of the spinal leak. So that's still not well proven, but that's, that's a theory. Okay. Let's get into what some of the more common treatments for this disorder are. Well, the, the first treatment is gonna be lifestyle changes. So you're gonna to wanna to drink at least, um, you know, there's something called the eight by eight rule. It's uh, basically where you drink eight ounces of water eight times per day. So you wanna hydrate yourself, um, in addition to that, you're going to want to um, uh, potentially use support stockings, particularly if you've got Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome or, or hypermobility, because what happens is if you're pulling blood in your, in your legs when you stand up, then, then the pressure of the support stockings will prevent that. So you're going to want to have at least thigh-high uh, support stockings, and those can be ordered by your physician. Third thing is you want to be active. You, want to, um, you don't want to give in to this thing and then you know, just um, lay in bed all the time because that will actually make things worse. So if you get yourself into some sort of exercise routine, um, that can help as well. Sometimes I kind of need to kind of push through it. And then there are a variety of other therapies. There's one a therapy called fludrocortisone. It's a hormone that causes you to retain sodium in your body so so instead of like peeing the sodium out you retain it in your body that increases your blood pressure and blood volume and that decreases the symptoms of POTS um, as well there is a one form of POTS called hyperadrenergic POTS which I mentioned before where the sympathetic nervous system is kind of on overdrive and that can be diagnosed as we said before with uh, with hormone levels measured in the serum if you have that particular form of POTS then you can do something called a beta blocker. The beta blockers kind of tame down the sympathetic nervous system a bit. And then there are a variety of other therapies, um, either that relate to hydration. There, there's, some, there's some evidence to suggest that uh, patients come in once a week for a liter of, of uh, IV fluids uh, to help this. Um, there are, there's some suggestion that medications that cause you to absorb more water, there's one called DDAVP, it comes in a nasal spray that's sometimes sometimes used. There's a heart medication called Avabradine, which uh, is important for kind of blunting the fast heart rate that would be given by a cardiologist. And uh, and then sometimes stimulants like Adderall, which is something you'd use for ADD, have been used. There are no um, FDA-approved therapies yeah. for POTS syndrome. So all these therapies are used off-label by doctors. And it's really important that you get to see a doctor that really has some expertise in POTS. Like I probably know more than the average person does about POTS, but I'm only gonna use two, probably three or four different therapies. I might 
use the hydration, salt tablets, maybe a beta blocker, maybe the fludrocortisone. But I'm not going to go to all these uh, second and third line agents that are used by these specialty clinics for, you know, for POTS. So you really need to get to a doctor that knows what they're doing. Most of the doctors that treat POTS are car cardiologists, but not every cardiologist is has expertise in treating POTS. Probably doctors who are who deal with the electrical circuitry um, called EPS or electrophysiologists are probably um, a good choice for cardiologists. Mm -hmm. But um, even some of them may not have a great deal of expertise uh, with dealing with POTS. Right. Um, so let's move to, since this is a uh, headache and migraine disease podcast, why does POTS cause people to have certain types of headache? Well, we don't really know, but one type of headache that people with POTS get is something called a coat hanger headache. Mm -hmm. And you say, what is a coat hanger headache? So the coat hanger, um, the lower part of the coat hanger where you put your coat would be your shoulders. Mm -hmm. And then the, the little, you know, um, C part of the hanger kind of comes up into the back of the head. So it's a headache that kind of involves the back of the head and uh, is in and the coat hanger part of it is in the shoulders and oftentimes that headache will be worse when patients stand up um, so that's one type the other thing is is if you have eds or have hypermobility and you have pots then your likelihood of having migraine is really really high right. and that probably relates to the fact that pots is a form of what we call dysautonomia this means abnormalities of the, uh, on autonomy means autonomic nervous system. So abnormalities of the fight or flight nervous system um, can probably trigger attacks of migraine headache and or predispose to the development of migraine. At least that's what we think, although that's not really well known. So both migraine and coat hanger headache are more likely. And if uh, that one doctor from Stanford is correct, then maybe spinal fluid leaks might predispose to this as well. And uh, th those people get headaches that are worse when they stand up and better when they lie down. Okay. So you've also touched on this. You're beating me to my questions today. Um, let's discuss what you've, you've touched on them, but what syndromes co-occur with POTS? We've mentioned Ehlers-Danlos uh, and POTS occur together. So what others uh, often occur at the same time as this disorder? Well, one is diabetes. So diabetes, uh, there's a form of POTS that is associated with diabetes because diabetes can affect the autonomic nervous system, the fight or flight nervous system. Um, and then there's, there's other um, diseases called autoimmune diseases that attack the autonomic nervous system, the fight or flight nervous system. And uh, those um, can sometimes be treated by medications that kind of calm down the immune system um, as well. But fortunately, those are, are relatively rare. Um, so, uh, my last question is, if someone feels they may have um, these symptoms that we've discussed and they may feel that they want to be evaluated for POTS, what kind of doctor should they seek out first? Can their primary care doctor help evaluate them for this? What steps should they take, do you think? It's very doctor specific. Um, some PCPs know more about POTS than others. I will tell you that that POTS is kind of one of these kind of trendy uh, diseases. So I think that doctors are learning more and more about this disease all the time. Right. Um, so it's possible that your primary care physician could do some of these therapies, but when you really get down to brass tacks, when, you, when you're starting to deal with all these special therapies, like I talked about before, most PCPs, and I would say probably even a lot of cardiologists, are probably not going to feel comfortable um, using all these second and third line medications uh, that are used. So you're going to, going to need to find a doctor that has special expertise in, in POTS, but I'll tell you, there's not many of them nationally. You might only be looking at four or five different groups in various locations that are truly experts in POTS disease. Okay. All right. Well, um, I hope that that helps some people out there. And um, is there anything else that you would like to add to our discussion on POTS specifically as it relates to headache, migraine, or co hanger headache? Well, I would say one thing that, that 
uh, because the pulse rate goes up in POTS, a lot of people will be diagnosed with panic disorder uh, when they have uh, POTS symptoms because their heart is racing, their heart is pounding, they get anxious and so forth. And some of the symptoms of, of um, POTS can be mistaken as panic disorder. Not to say that every case of panic disorder is POTS, but it is possible. So I think that you first need to be able to recognize the disease. Then you have to get yourself to a doctor that knows how to treat the disease and diagnose it. First diagnose it and then later treat it. And uh, you need to be aware of the fact that it exists. Otherwise, you may not even, um, you may be totally unaware that this is going on. And it, it could be having a very substantial impact on your life. Right. Okay, I hope everyone found this episode helpful. And this is Dr. Weitzel and Dr. Martin signing off of this episode of Heads Up. We will see you here next week. Good night.